That was the late Senator Mike Gravel, who served for 12 years as a Democrat from Alaska. He's been described as a Bernie more than Bernie as a Bernie more Bernie than Bernie, and is remembered for his outspoken opposition to controversial issues like the Vietnam War, the draft, and President Nixon's war on drugs. But perhaps his most famous moment came in 1971, when he tearfully read 4,100 pages of the Pentagon Papers out loud into the congressional record. Gravel passed away last year at the age of 91, but not before mounting one last campaign for president. It was his second White House bid, in fact. But this time, it wasn't a team of Beltway veterans or pollsters spearheading the Gravel 2020 effort. Gravel's team was a little more eclectic. See for yourself. How are you? So excited to meet you, sir. Yeah. Hi, I'm Henry. You're Henry. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm ben. standing in for David. You're very Seeking good. Here. And this, this young lady? My girlfriend, Rosalind. Rosalind. Rosalind, pleased to meet you. Closer. OK, good. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> Perfect. That's right. A group of high school students led by Henry Williams and David Ox convinced the then 89-year-old Gravel to run as a gadfly, as a provocateur. They weren't expecting to win the election, but they wanted to change the conversation and bring attention to Gravel's anti-war direct democracy platform. The campaign went viral on social media, eventually getting support from over 65,000 unique donors and nearly winning Gravel a spot on the debate stage. Now, director Sky Wallen tells this unlikely story in the new documentary, American Gadfly, examining how Gen Z is challenging and changing the political landscape. Joining me now to discuss it all is the director himself, Sky Wallen. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the show tonight. Happy New Year. How did you Happy come to this how did you come to this story? And what made you believe the story of these teens and Mike Gravel was worth telling? Sure. Well, in 2007, 2008, I was uh, in high school. And um, during that time, the war, war in Iraq was blowing up. And I became much more uh, aware of what was going on and was researching. It was sort of heartbroken, actually, uh, to see um, that we could wage such a terrible and illegal war. And I started paying attention to the early 07 primaries um, and saw Mike Gravel up on the Democratic stage um, kind of throwing rocks and, and calling BS um, uh, amongst other Democrats who, who were kind of paying lip service to wanting to end the war and weren't doing everything they possibly could to do that. So I looked into Mike Gravel's past and saw how he fought against uh, the, the Vietnam War, against Nixon, helping to end the draft, releasing the Pentagon Papers in the public record. And um, yeah, I fell in love with the guy and just followed him ever since. And then when I saw that kids <laughs> were bringing him back to do one last presidential campaign, I kind of, I, I I thought this is perfect. This is such a cool contemporary way to tell a new story about youth and democracy and also to tell a story about one of my heroes, Mike Gravel. So. Senator Gravel passed away last summer, so several months before tomorrow's release date of your documentary film. What did you learn about him that others may not know while making this film? Um, well, you see a lot of his videos and he's kind of, he seems really tough, but actually he's the biggest sweetheart um, that I could have I, more than I could have imagined. Um, he, Mike, and he talks about in the in the film, you know how trusting is so important, and and how he, you know, really he says you get burned now and then, but he really kind of reinvigorated my belief in in, in trusting other people, and that's sort of foundational to everything he he did throughout his career. It's also foundational to his biggest idea, which is direct direct democracy, so introducing a fourth branch of government to the United States government, which would be a people's uh, legislature. So so I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I think you'll, you'll see the film and you see a really warm guy. Um, and I don't know, you, see, you sort of see be, be behind the politician. And I'm, yeah, I think that's, that's his most endearing trait to me. And Mike Gravel's campaign exceeded its fundraising goals, definitely gained an outsized amount of attention during the 2020 primaries. But ultimately, this team of uh, young people failed to get Gravel on the stage for any of the Democratic debates. How do you think that group of kids would change their strategy if they got to rerun the campaign? Yeah, I think, you know, they, they well surpassed their 65,000 donor goal, which was, you know, de blasio got a fraction of that delaney got a fraction of that it was the polling that was weighted more heavily and i think you know the kids talk about in the film that if they could do it over again they would have 
been trying to get on those polls way, way early on. Um, I think, you know, ultimately they really needed that more than they thought. They thought the polling would be easier actually than the, than the donors. Um, so I think, you know, going back, they would have really been because they just weren't included on the polls. No, that's a good point and a good reminder, especially for our audience at home, that the DNC had these rules that you had to meet certain, some may argue, arbitrary criteria in terms of polling and donors in order to get on the debate stage. And you had Andrew Yang and Marianne Williamson and others who made it onto the stage. Um, in your documentary, yeah. Andrew Yang is interviewed and he calls these particular kids with Gravel, quote, once in a generation talent. But isn't Gen Z as a whole proving to be a generation of pretty impressive activists across the board? Absolutely. I mean, not only are these, these kids are kind of waking up uh, into a sort of a uh, very difficult war world, um, war, environmental destruction, all these things. And they have this, they just totally understand the technology. So you see, and they kind of keep popping up. You see them all over the place. These are just some of them. Um, you see these kids who really know how to communicate on the internet, use social media to their benefit to wage asymmetrical campaigns, uh, which are kind of just cutting through all the, I guess, the old guard. And they're getting their message directly to people, which is the most extraordinary thing. I I was able to, I felt like the documentary is really about these sort of asymmetrical new type of campaigning. And kids are sort of at the forefront of it. I think anyone can do it, but um, kids are really, you know, they, they know how to, how to use this stuff way more than even I. So, um, so yeah, I think that, that was my biggest take, takeaway. You have these really talented kids who know technology and also they don't want to wait. You know, they, they see problems. They don't just want to complain. They want to jump into the arena and get to work. It doesn't matter, you know, where you are on the political spectrum. I think you can just, you can appreciate the fundamental aspect of, wow, they just really just jump in there to run for president. And, uh, you know, yes. it's funny, it's a fun ride as well, but they, they, they're, they're able to do it and have a lot of fun while they're doing it, which is refreshing to me. And Sky, one of the subjects of your film, David Ox, was born in 2001. And this is how he describes the world, according to Gen Z. Uh, quote, Generation Z, oh, we can listen to it. Generation Z, they've grown up in a world where every system is broken. They were young when the 2008 financial crisis hit. They saw the invasion of Iraq and the invasion of Afghanistan, climate crisis. And so they know some sort of, of radical change, some sort of, of revolutionary change is imminent and is necessary. What kind of revolutionary change do you think Gen Z will have to implement to avoid the disasters he describes? Um, well, it's going to take a lot of people getting together. Um, and I mean, you know, you just look at the science, we, you know, you look at the climate, um, you look at all the, all these wars and, and unchecked corruption. It's going to take a lot of people coming together and, and fighting for change. I mean, I, I can't tell you exactly the prescription I'm, you know, I'm here observing and, and, and documenting some of these movements. I think it's going to take and it's to talk about in the film, you know, one Mike Gravel campaign doesn't change the country or the world, but a thousand do. And I really think that now more than ever, people have more power than they actually realize. Um, you could, I mean, the, this campaign is evidence of that, but I, I think it's going to take a, thousands of people or more um, really finding their, what's their asymmetrical campaign? What's their asymmetrical movement to cut through the old guard? and demand the change that that is needed. So, you know, I can't give you the answer, but I can say that I think it's going to be some a lot of things like this. Um, not this exactly. Some everyone has to find their own their own niche um, yes. and their own in. But I think that that's key. You know, we can't be complacent.